My name is Lewis Piper. I'm an assistant professor in the physics department at Binghamton University, uh, which is a state university of New York school. Here we have our XPS system, our X-ray photo emission spectrometer. This is also known as an electron spectrometer for chemical analysis, you can commonly called an ESCA. The X-rays are from our aluminum K-alpha source, which are monochromated, are directed onto our sample, and then the, uh, the emitted photoelectrons are detected with our analyzer. This system is primarily used to determine the chemical composition of solids. We are doing our measurements in uh, ultra-high vacuum. So the pressure difference between here, which is atmosphere, so say a thousand millibar, Inside here, we're talking of the region of uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 10 millibar. This is why we see our chamber has these thick pieces of stainless steel, because it is holding the pressure difference. So we can see that our system is comprised of sections, which we can isolate as different parts. So here, we have isolated the chamber, and we have these gate valves. These separate our chambers so then we can maintain different pressures. This is our main chamber and we always try and keep it in the best uh, ultra high vacuum conditions that we can. So this is trying to get base pressures or one in the minus 10 millibar. Here we can see it separate the chamber um, with a dedicated load lock. And this part here is where we can close and protect the vacuum on this side in our main chamber and we can uh, vent this to a dry nitrogen environment where we have a small volume. We can put our sample in, close, pump back down and our turnaround is very quick. In addition, a lot of the pieces of equipment are very sensitive and so we do not want to expose them to water or even high pressures, especially if they were running a, a bias they may get damaged. In addition, this particular piece, we have added on a dedicated surface preparation chamber. As I mentioned, we are measuring from uh, photoelectrons that primarily come from the topmost layers. We're talking, in this case, our effective probing depth is something like five nanometers at most. We can make it more surface sensitive, but we're limited to that topmost five nanometer region. So we have a dedicated surface preparation chamber where we can clean our surfaces uh, because whenever we insert our samples into the chamber, they are going to be uh, exposed to atmosphere. They'll have hydroxyl, hydrocarbon species on the surface. And because we're surface sensitive, we'll be measuring them rather than our solid. We also have a, a separate uh, load lock system, so then we can load samples independently into the surface preparation chamber without affecting experiments in the main chamber. The main chamber consists of both a depth profile sputter gun, a UV source, an X-ray photo emission analyzer, which we can see has its characteristic hemispherical uh, half uh, shape. Then the top here, here is uh, our controls for our X-ray source, which is a uh, aluminum K-alpha is monochromated, so then we can uh, make sure that we have a small uh, source of incident radiation. Hi, my name is Ross. I'm an undergraduate student, and I'm going to show you how to load the sample. Over here, we have the chamber where the sample is loaded. Right next to it, we have the transfer arm, which is used to move the sample from this chamber to the rest of the chambers. So let's go. Here's the puck where the sample is loaded. Right now I'm attaching the sample to this puck.
So as I mentioned before, we are uh, having uh, pressure difference between atmosphere and those pressures comparable to those in space. How do we achieve these? Well, the first part is we have to re achieve what's known as a rough uh, vacuum. Here we use a diaphragm uh, pump. This will pump these lines, pump the whole chamber. So here we have our load lock, and it would evacuate this all the way down to a rough vacuum. At that point, we can start bringing on our turbo uh, vacuum pump. Turbos can only operate at good pressures, so that's why we can see that we still have to run our diaphragm pump through a turbo. This turbo can bring us down to these uh, much higher uh, vacuums or even ultra high vacuums, depending on the size of the turbo. We measure at various stages. Here we have a Pirani gauge for measuring our rough pressure. And on the other side of this chamber, we have a cold cathode gauge for measuring our high vacuum pressure or even ultra high vacuum pressure. Hi, I'm Nick Quackenbush. I'm a PhD student here at Binghamton. And this is our control unit for our vacuum chamber. Uh, here we see the pressure for our preparation chamber. And this controls the pressure and everything, this control unit. And this here shows the pressure in our load lock. So what we're going to do now is start the rotary pump to pump it down to a rough vacuum and then the turbo is going to kick on after. So this is our sample preparation chamber here and this is a, a gate valve that locks it off from this is our load lock here. We try to keep pressure below uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 9 millibar and we have a bunch of different things on this. Here's our mass spectrometer. Here's our Kelvin probe down here. And in the back, we have a sputter gun to clean the surface of our samples. And that whole thing uh, is our transfer arm that goes inside and moves our sample around. And that could also do heating. Uh, hello, my name is Sean Salas, and I work with Dr. Lewis Piper. I'm a PhD student in the material science program. And uh, over here, we've been uh, taking some data from our XPS machine. This is kind of what it looks like in this raw form before we analyze it. Uh, each one of these little graphs is a, a specific region corresponding to a specific element. We have like carbon, gallium, indium, uh, oxygen, and zinc. And here we have the balance band where we can uh, probe the uh, VVM of our sample. And so I've just finished this scan. And now I'm going to uh, move on to doing more scans, and we're going to move the sample to a different angle, which will allow us to get a kind of a depth profile from our sample just by changing what angle the x-rays come in at. What can this tell us? Well, as I mentioned, we use this for chemical analysis. So often we're looking at new materials, and we want to make sure that, A, we've grown it correctly. Two, we're interested in how we can relate the changes in composition with uh, performance in the device. So that may depend on how much uh, conductivity the material has. Because of the nature of the energy of the x-rays and the UV light we send in, the photoelectrons that we measure will uh, typically come from the topmost layers. And as a result, our composition we get is from near the surface. And that can be very different to the bulk. And the surface uh, plays an important role in devices. So even if it's a well standard material that we consider that we know well, like zinc oxide, its surface properties can be very different to that in the bulk. So this is a powerful tool for this.